In this video, we're going to learn how to use analog voltages to control the color of the background of a web page. We're going to use an ESP8266 connected to an analog to digital converter board so that it can measure analog voltages on three different channels. The ESP8266 will also run a web server such that when a client accesses it, the color of the background of the page that is shown is controlled by the analog voltage measurements. As usual, I'll go over all the steps from assembling the hardware to writing the software to get this project working. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. They're currently offering a couple of fantastic offers. The first is a 10% off discount from any PCB and PCB assembly order that you place between March 26th and April 30th of 2020. There is no minimum amount required and no usage limit, so take advantage of this offer. For those orders over $500, customers are eligible for winning a free infrared thermometer with their order. NextPCB are not a broker, but a high quality PCB manufacturer. They provide turnkey service for PCB prototyping, manufacturing, and assembly, including quality testing and the final shipment as part of the process. For this video, I'll be using an ESP8266 development board in the Wemos form factor. I'll also use a four channel analog to digital converter board that'll connect to the ESP8266 over I2C. For generating the analog voltages, I'll use three potentiometers. And to put it all together, I'll use a solderless breadboard. As usual, you can find all of these components in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. The reason I'm using a four channel analog to digital converter board is because the ESP8266 only has one analog input as I want to have more than one analog voltage coming in, the ADS-1115 provides a great solution. Even though it's been a while since I've used a breadboard, the assembly process is pretty straightforward. You're welcome to follow along or skip ahead in the video if you already know how to do this. I'll start by connecting power and ground using 3.3 volts. Then I'll move on to making the I2C connections. And before doing anything else, I'll run a quick check to make sure that the I2C communication is working properly. For this, I'll go ahead and open the Arduino IDE and through the tools menu option, open up the library manager. I'll look for the ADS1x15 library and install it in my system. With the library installed, I can use the file menu option and go to the examples for the library to open the single-ended one. I'll need to change the class that is used to match my current setup. Then as a personal preference, I'll change the bot rate to communicate over serial and all this script does is get the readings from the four different channels and print them to the serial monitor. I'll go ahead and connect the board to the USB port of my computer, upload the code, and if everything goes well, when I open the serial monitor, I should see the measurements being printed out. As the pins are not connected to anything, the values will be random. Now that I know the I2C communication works, it's time to connect some analog inputs. To generate the voltages, I'll use a potentiometer. I'll connect the two ends to 3.3 volts and ground and the variable pin to the first analog input channel. Now when I change the position of the slider in the potentiometer, I should see the readings on that channel change. With that looking like it's working correctly, I can move to finishing up the assembly by connecting the other two potentiometers. With the hardware assembled, it's time to write some software. 
as a starting point, I'll be using some code from my demos repository for the ESP8266. I'll download the whole thing and make a copy of the web server WebSockets folder. I'll rename it to TrainPods RGB and open it up in the Arduino IDE. I'll start by getting rid of the things that I won't need, like pin definitions, some of the functions that I use in the JavaScript of the page that is served, as well as the HTML that I use in that page. In the setup function, I will need to set the mode of the pin, and as I'm not planning on receiving any data from the client, I will need to monitor incoming events on the WebSocket. Lastly, in the loop function, I won't be monitoring the incoming data over serial, but I'll leave some of the structure of the code as I will be using it a little later. To ensure I don't have any errors so far, I'll hit compile for a quick check. Then I'll include the analog to digital converter library, and to make measurements periodically, I'll be using a software timer. I'll remember to put in my network credentials, and then I'll declare a variable of the ticker type to hold my timer. In the raw stream literal that contains a web page that will be sent to clients, I'll need to make a few changes. On the HTML side of things, I'll use a very simple page with an empty body. Then on the JavaScript side, I'll look for the function that processes the incoming data on the WebSocket. As I expect the data to be formatted in JSON, I'll go ahead and parse it, and for now, I'll simply log it onto the console. Now to get the actual data from the A2D converter, I'll initialize the timer object as well as the one that I'll use to communicate with the board. I'll need to first declare that variable as well as assign a callback function that'll be attached to the timer object. I'll call it read data and then I'll go ahead and define it. Remember that when we use these timers, we shouldn't do any heavy processing inside the callback function, but rather set or unset a flag and do the heavy processing inside the loop. I'll call the flag read underscore data and a callback function will set it to true 10 times per second. I'll then use the flag in an if statement so that when it's set to true, I'll perform the measurements on the A to D converter. For this, I'll use the read ADC single-ended method as used in the example that I tried before. As I'm getting roughly 14 bits of resolution, I'll scale down the digital conversion to the 0 to 255 range. This will make my life easier later when I get to set the color of the background of the page. I'll do this for the three different channels and then move on to constructing the JSON string that will send over the WebSocket. To test things out, I'll first send just one of the channels and I'll have that represent the brightness of the red color that I want to see on the web page. I'll use the broadcast text method to send it over the WebSocket and finish up the code block by setting the flag to false. If I upload this code, and open up the serial monitor, I should see the JSON string being printed out, and as I tweak the analog voltage coming in, I should see the output string change accordingly. Now if I get the IP address of the ESP8266 in my local Wi-Fi network, I can fire up the web browser, point it to that IP address, and check that the WebSocket messages are coming across. For this, I'll use the developer tools built into the Chrome browser. Specifically, if I go to the console tab, I should see the same messages that are being printed on the serial monitor. With the WebSocket connection tested, let's go ahead and change some background colors. For this, I'll go back to the JavaScript code that's being sent with the web page to the client. I'll need a simple helper function to change the 0 to 255 values to a hex string. Then in addition to logging the data to the console, I'll use the background property of the body of the page to use the color data and change the background. As this property takes a hex string as a value, I'll need to use the function I just wrote. Because I'm only receiving the red color right now, I'll set the green and blue values to 0. With those changes in place, I'm ready to upload the code, and as soon as I refresh the page, I should see the background have some tint of red. I can see the exact value that is set to by going once again to the console. Now when I change the analog value on that channel, the brightness of that red color should change in real time thanks to the WebSocket. With this core functionality working, it's now a matter of going back to the sketch and completing it for the other two analog channels. I'll first construct the full JSON formatted string and use those values on the JavaScript side of things. I'll go ahead and upload this final piece of code. And for kicks and giggles, I'll use my iPad to display the page. Now, when I tweak each one of the channels, I get a different tint for that particular color.
And so there you have it. We've used an ESP8266 with an analog to digital converter board to read three different analog voltages that set the background color of a web page in real time using web sockets. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two that really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.